All right, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Major General Jeff Druschel. I'm the commander of the United States Army Security Assistance Command. Thanks for taking the opportunity to come out and listen to uh, sort of a combination pitch of Foreign Military Sales 101 and uh, how industry can help. So, you know, we've got most of USASAC showed up, you know, here to listen to the brief, so I, I think they think I'm going to pitch a helmet fire in front of the crowd, but uh, I'm hoping not to do that. But I do ask a little, a little bit of your indulgence because I've been running my yapper all day and my voice is a little bit hoarse uh, from talking to industry and talking, seeing old friends and wandering around. So <clears throat> without further ado, uh, special thanks to uh, General McQuistian for asking me to do this uh, and uh, be part of this AUSA event. I look forward to a productive dialogue. Our security assistance mission is vitally important to the Army. It creates a positive impact with our allies, with industry, and for the Army. And it's a remarkable command, and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. And I have a great, uh, great teammates. And I hope to afterwards you can, I can introduce some of them to you. And they're all standing by here, uh, taking copious notes, with arms folded, and frowns on their faces. So a few things I want to highlight this afternoon. So if you were in the the opening comments, you heard the Under Secretary of the Army mention deliberately foreign military sales in his opening comments. I don't think we've seen that before. Uh, it, this morning, if you listen to General Brown's pitch, he was talking about builder, building partner capacity. He was talking about coalitions, and he was talking about uh, uh, countering influence uh, in his area of operations. My main goal for this session, with that context established, is to understand where the USASAC and the industry team can communicate and collaborate on FMS programs to do three things. Achieve speed and execution, ensure that the, the U.S. Army remains readiness where there's tension between FMS and the U.S. Army, and to ensure interoperability with our, uh, with our foreign partners. Our international partners are relying on us to get this right and to do it as rapidly as possible. Next slide. So, so you may have, may, not, or not, may have not heard the phrase, raise your hand if you've heard the phrase, economic security is national security. Everybody on my team should raise your hand. So, you know, that's President Trump, and that's from the National Defense Strategy. As many of you are aware, the National Security Presidential Memorandum outlining the U.S. conventional arms transfer policy aims to keep the U.S. technological edge over potential enemies, build up the defense industrial base to generate jobs, economic security, advance research and development, and expand partnerships that aim to end, extend the, the country's global influence. The acting secretary's priorities flow down and in. The Defense Security Cooperation Agency, led by Lieutenant General uh, Charles Hooper, focuses on security cooperation and security assistance, and the importance of cultivating relationships and making our processes better and faster. As he likes to say, reducing the flash to bang. We're also synchronized with Army leadership from the Secretary, the Chief, and General Perna at Army Material Command to ensure that FMS demand signals do not impact Army readiness and illustrate how the FMS system can benefit the Army and Army readiness. Uh, not on this slide, but there's also a fourth line of uh, effort that was developed by the Chief of Staff of the Army, and that is building partner capacity. And the Army is working through the governance of that new line of effort, and so we'll be ramping up the attention it pays there. And we expect USASAC to pay a big part of that. So just a, a, few, a few discussion points. So you've heard the term great power competition. Great power competitors have implemented modernization programs to off, offset our conventional superiority. And the challenges they present are increasingly trans-regional, multi-domain, and multifunctional. We must be prepared to deal with an increasingly complex global security situation. Allies and multinational partners are the avenues for peace and security. History is compelling on this point. Nations win with strong allies when that nations with strong allies thrive. We're trying to improve our ability to compete with our adversaries by providing our partners with viable alternatives to foreign military materiel and, dis and services to maintain influence in key regions. So think about the competition space. The world is the competition space. <clears throat> and so in the competition space, short of armed conflict, FMS is a key player. In the competition space, if you just stop and think for a while, if you have a major sale of a piece of equipment, let's just pull something off the shelf. 
and say it's Bradley's. I'm not saying we're doing this, I'm just saying if we sell Bradley's to a country that is in the, the competitive space, that's probably 30 years worth of presence for training, spares, parts, interaction with commerce. That's 30 years of influence with one FMS sale. So just think about that. That's the competitive space we're dealing with. Next. Building partner capacity is a key element of the U.S. national security strategy. National counterterrorism and national defense strategies have become a central pillar of U.S. foreign policy in recent years. The combatant commanders are the centerpiece for prioritizing FMS requirements. This chart illustrates some of the different lanes we operate in from delivering new capabilities and all that comes with that to developing partner armies and soldiers by providing professional military education, hands-on training, executing deliveries in support of ongoing operations. As you can see, the security assistance enterprise is involved in everything from English language training to providing a fully integrated Patriot air defense system. I would offer that most of you here today touch a system or the two uh, listed here, which leads me to my next chart. All right, so here's how you fit in. <laughs> you can get involved with the process and we can collaborate more effectively to increase our speed and execution while enhancing Army readiness. So first, let me show you uh, the process. Some people say that USASAC executes FMS. Uh, you can say that if you want, but really what we do is we execute the FMS process. We use this process to build and sustain partner nation capacity, provide our friends and allies with the capability. The foreign military sales process is extremely complex and in some instances has over a hundred steps, but we all simply will break it down into six critical steps. First, number one, the country makes a request for material or services normally through the security cooperation offices in the embassies around the world. This request is called a letter of request. For industry, this is the primary way that industry engages uh, in writing and defining the requirements. So industry engagement with the SCO, with the chiefs of defense of the involved countries, uh, that will uh, allow the right level of detail into the requirements to, to allow us to have what's called an actionable LOR. And so when you talk about the speed of the process, the first step in having a fast process is having actionable requirements that can immediately be turned by industry. The enterprise uses the total package approach when developing an FMS case. We want to provide our partners the capability across the domains of building partner capacity through FMS, material, provisioning, munitions, training, uh, and this is important to include what our allies need to safely operate and maintain their weapon systems, spares, training, publications. So as we go through uh, and we build the case, those are the details that get built in. Each request requires State Department approval and some may even require congressional approval based on certain equipment or dollar thresholds. Once all the required approvals are received, USASAC and the AMC Security Assistance Enterprise begin developing the case. Once developed, we offer it back to the partner, and we call that a letter of offer and acceptance. Once the country signs, now we're in stage four, the country signs, submits their initial deposit, and we now set off about executing those, those LORs, those LOAs, excuse me. It's important to receive the initial deposit because we're immediately turning right around and requisitioning end items based on that case. USASAC and multiple other, other agencies are executing the deliveries of material and services. It's entirely possible that other implementing agencies such as the Corps of Engineers or uh, the United States uh, Army Medical Materiel Command will be implementing these as well. Once all the items are delivered and the bills are paid, the case will be closed. Actually, the case will be closed two years after all the bills will paid, will, are paid. Next slide. The security assistance business is most definitely a team sport. We all play a role in keeping the machine working. All right, Doug, is, are the gears turning? Okay, good. Success has been achieved. The gears are turning. Excuse me. I asked for your help in that first block precision in identifying requirements and in pricing. It's important to get this right on the front end of the case. Early engagement is the key, 
to set the gears in motion. We're increasingly focused on readiness, both of the U.S. Army and our partners, and it's only through concerted effort that we'll be able to ensure that we meet the need. The FMS system allows our partners to take advantage of the U.S. Army's wholesale supply system, which saves money for both the U.S. Army and our partners. When we get our foreign partners to buy in to the wholesale supply system, a couple of things happen. First of all, it maintains the health of the Army Working Capital Fund. Secondly, it smooths, um, it smooths the um, production line of industry by uh, collecting the requirements and submitting them at one time and allowing industry to produce over time, thus keeping the production lines warm in industry. Finally, the, imp the impact FMS has on you, our industry partners, is to keep your transportation networks and your supply lines and your critical artisan skills uh, polished. Slide. <clears throat> it really does take a great deal of teamwork to make this FMS machine fire on all cylinders. It's vital for us to maintain our focus on Army readiness while also building partner capacity for our partners. And uh, thank you in advance for allowing me to, to speak with you today, and I look forward to taking any questions from the audience who is not currently assigned to USASAC. <laughs> yes? I understand, your, I understand that uh, when you talk to countries, you're, you're trying to push the process of to support the budget. So how, how industry can help? So there's two ways that, 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 uh, that countries can purchase provisions and spare parts for their, um, I almost feel like a softball from my own organization because I love talking about this. Um, two ways they can spare provisions. First is called uh, the CLISA program, which is the combined logistics, no, somebody spelled it out, cooperative logistics uh, supply support program. That program is an investment into the Army supply chain or the DLA supply chain. So if you're a country that has 40 tanks and you buy into the CLISA program, the Army will now count those 40 tanks when they do failure and demand planning for their supply chain. There will be more readiness driver parts on the shelf available for, for uh, U.S. forces and for foreign partners. If it's an unprogrammed demand, which is what happens when you have a blanket order uh, resupply program, that requirement will go automatically to the bottom of the list and uh, will not be timely. The CLISA program is 30% faster than the blanket purchase program. And so when you're building your spares, uh, having spares discussions with, uh, with foreign partners, I would encourage you to talk about investing in the Army and DLA supply chains uh, vice just dropping money in a blanket order line and ordering parts one at a time. That's how you can help. Thank you. That is very helpful, by the way. I can take questions or we can have 15 seconds of uncomfortable eye contact. <laughs> Sir, I have a question for you. How can small businesses or uh, middle men's like that? very small business-wise, help you to facilitate these transactions. Anyway, we've got programs for entrepreneurs, small businesses. So I have two responses to that question. So ultimately, to get access to you know, whatever proposals may come out there, the first, uh, the first line is you know, the, the contracting, the Army Contracting Command page where they publish all the, all the contracts that are being let is a good place to get a start if there's something that fits within the niche that you offer. The second is I would, I would encourage you to attend the NADA business conference that we hold here in, uh, that's held here in Huntsville biannually. Biannually. Uh, there's a lot of small businesses that come in and, uh, and share lessons learned on how they can do that stuff. So that's the way we get in there. Sir. Uh, sir, Steve Speaks, uh, also representing a small business. One of the things that you mentioned that I think is important for all of us in the concept of total package infield. In other words, what we sell or package, say a Patriot battery, does it have all of the, the, the sets, kits, and outfits it takes to make it operationally capable? Um, one of the things we're finding is just simply, for example, aluminum containers could be a question. Uh, you get to a tactical environment, that could be a challenge. 
So during case development, well, while the uh, security assistance management directives are are building the total package fielding, that all gets that all gets built into the contract package that is let by ACC. So you may have to dig into a larger uh, a larger uh, you know case that may look uh, something not like what you're used to doing to determine in the total package fielding you know if there's a spares line or a or container line or something that's included in there uh, that fits your your niche capability all right if there's nothing further i will dismount these microphones <laughs> all right thanks for the opportunity